I am Rachel. I'm making right now a pizza rustica. We're having some friends over this evening and it's really a wonderful dish to serve. When they enter the house, they'll smell that aroma of the pizza rustica and that's exactly what I want. Let me show you what I did. I already started the process. I heated my pan with two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil on a low flame. After the oil was hot, I put two cloves of garlic and I waited until they were beautiful golden in color and a little blistered. Then I added my onion and stirred them until they were translucent. I'm ready to add my spinach. It's already been squeezed really, really dry. I've removed my garlic because I don't want anyone to have a surprise when we're eating. I really want the spinach to absorb all these beautiful flavors of the onion and the infused oil with the garlic. I'm just folding it over gently so that it gets all of the onion mixed in really nicely. Oh, it's smelling so good. Now that that's all mixed, I'm going to add just a little bit of salt, but not much. The reason I'm not adding so much is because Parmigiano, it's a salty cheese, and we're going to be using that in this recipe. So I want my spinach to have some flavor, a little bit of salt, but I don't want to go overboard because then the whole dish will be too salty and just not taste nice. There we go. Now I'm going to need this to cool down. I'm going to use a prepackaged dough. These rolls are at the supermarket here in Italy and I'll link below a similar brand you can find in the US. Um, I bought two. The other one is in the refrigerator because I want it to stay nice and cold. This one I'm going to open up now and it's a round shape and I am going to lay this directly into my pan. Checking that it's pretty much even on hangover on all the sides. And now I'm just gonna lightly push that in gently because as soon as our mixture is ready, we're going to pour it inside here. I just wanna get this ready ahead of time. Sometimes I feel like I'm wrestling with it just a little bit, but it's just some patience and a little finesse and it'll go in in no, no time. I wanna make sure that it will also cling and, and hang over just a little bit because the mixture is heavy and I don't want it to pull the dough in with it. Now I'm gonna set this aside and let's bake the mixture. Put it, I'm going to start by putting ricotta into the bowl. This is 250 grams of ricotta. So I'm just scratching that all into the bowl. Isn't this mini spatula just a dream? I love it. I got it last time I was in the US. I think it's just perfect for scratching out of bowls. Now I'm going to add two eggs. One. And two. Now I have my electric whisk and I'm just going to whisk until it's really fluffy or as fluffy as I can get it. That's looking really nice and thick. Perfect. So now that this is whisked and it's nice and fluffy, I'm going to add my Parmigiano. I have 60 grams and also the Gruyere or Emmental. You can use either one. I'm just sprinkling that in and I'm going to start mixing. It's getting nice and thick. And now I'm going to add my Gruyere cheese. I just freshly shredded this, so it has a really, mm, I wanna eat it. I'm trying not to. Okay, so that's all in. And we're just going to mix that. You can hear it getting thicker. All right, perfect. Done with that part. At this point, I'm ready to add the spinach. It's very cool to the touch, which is perfect. I don't want it warm because it could cook my mixture and I don't want that to happen. 
I want everything to cook evenly at the same time in the oven. So now that my spinach is ready, let's go ahead and add it. And this time I'm using a spatula, not my electric mixer because everything is so thick and it's really just better to use the spatula. So let me show you what I'm doing. I'm just scooping that right in to the mixture. Here we are. Let me show you. And now with my, hand, my, my spatula, I'm just going to mix it really carefully. And now this is the point where I just pour it right into my pan, which is all ready. And yes, I left the paper because when it's finished, I wanna be able to lift it out. I'll show you when we get to that point. But trust me, if you don't for some reason have this paper, you can use oven paper. Okay, here we are. Just scoop it in. Making sure it's evenly distributed. Okay, I just took my second roll from the refrigerator. It's nice and cold and ready to be put on the top. I just wanted to mention that I smoothed out my pizza rustica and take a look here. And as I smoothed it out, I didn't compress it. I just smoothed the top. Um, it's not necessary to compress it. It's already very dense and heavy and you just need to smooth it. That, that would be my recommendation. Okay, put that there. I'm taking my second roll, it's nice and cold. And I'm going to save this, just set it to the side for a moment. Thank you, lemons. Now there is overhang. You can see that all the way around. I'm going to align it the best I can, and I'm going to trim the excess overhang. I don't wanna make it short because that's not the idea, but I don't need all this excess and the excess I'm going to use for some really cute designs with my cookie cutters. This time I'm going to do a bunny. We're close to Easter. At Christmas, I do a Christmas tree and, and stars, hearts, depends on the time of year. And I'm going to put it back on this piece of paper and come back to that later with the rolling pin. For now, this is what I wanna do. I'm going to take my edges and I want to pinch them together and I'm going to roll it towards me. And I'm gonna keep doing that all the way around. And if you have too much excess, it's harder to roll and it's just too thick of a crust, a little too bulky. I like crust, but maybe not like that. <laughs> this is just gonna be great. I can't wait to serve it. Let me show you how I'm making that crust. I kind of use my thumb as a guide and just roll over it. That's how I do it, just going all the way around. And just very gently because I don't want to rip it underneath either. I, I need it to stay encased. It's called pizza rustica, rustic pizza. So to have a very perfect crust kind of goes against the idea of like a rustic pizza being made in the countryside. Great, there we go. I just want to show you what I did. I put my excess pieces in here. Try to lay them side by side. You can cut them if you want, make it a little easier. Just gonna overlap them a little bit. And now, not a hard press, just enough to get those two layers together. Now, I'm going to take a little bunny. I have a bunny. I have a star and I have a heart. I'm just gonna press down and make my cutout. Sometimes it doesn't come out correctly for me. I just pull up around it. You can do this trick if you have the same problem. There he is, my little bunny. So cute. 
setting him aside. It's not necessary to have the decorations, but it's just so cute when you see it coming out of the oven with the little shapes of a Christmas tree or bunny or the stars. So I've made my cutouts. They're set aside for the moment because last step is to paint my crust because when it bakes, I want it to become this beautiful golden color. And the best way to do that is with an egg yolk. So I need to separate my egg white and egg yolk. There we go, the egg white in one dish. Draining that the best I can. There we go. And I'll set that aside. And here I want my egg yolk. There we are. And then I'm just going to add a splash of cold water. It's probably not even a quarter of an ounce. I'm just going to mix that really well. Good. And now I'm literally going to just brush it on. Just going to brush the top of my pizza rustica. I'm going to make sure I get all the edges of the, the crust to make that very nice and golden. Sometimes my eggs are very yellow, like a very orange center. And this one is a very gentle looking color. Don't worry, it'll still make things nice and golden. Now for my, my bunny, I'm gonna start with him in the middle. In order to have him stick, I'm going to put a little bit of the yolk on the back of him and just lay him nicely in the center. There we go. And now I'm going to just put the stars all the way around. I just painted the back of my star and I think it'll look good right there. there. I wasn't kidding, literally painting it on. <laughs> there we go. And There we go. Little balls as decoration. Now I'm just going to brush over the tops of the star and the bunny very gently. I don't want them to move out of place. There you have it. Let's put this in the oven. I'm baking it in the oven for 40 to 50 minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. I just took the pizza rustica out of the oven. The reason I have the paper here in the beginning, I said that was important because I want to remove the, the torta rustica. So I'm going to take my cooling rack and very carefully, I'm going to lift my paper. Now it might rip because it's been toasted, so to speak, in the oven, but let's give it a try. Perfect. So I'm going to let the pizza rustica sit like this for about 15 minutes, maybe 20, and then I'm going to transfer it to a plate. Now my pizza rustica is cooled down and I'm going to transfer it to this little glass plate. You don't have to use a paper doily. I know they're considered out of fashion, but I think it adds a nice touch. And in some ways it also keeps my um, cake from sliding right off of the glass. So it has two functions. I like how it looks and it keeps the cake from sliding. Again, I'm going to use the paper really slowly, really carefully. Oh goodness. Mm. I might have to pick it up. There we go. And now for the paper, I'm just going to slowly peel it off. And I hope you enjoy making a pizza rustica also at home. Enjoy! Arrivederci!